you all please be seated may i now request the dignitaries to occupy their seats on the dais please A warm welcome to all the delegates from the industry, academia, and institute for the Naidama Birth Centenary Commemoration. A special welcome to the family members of Dr. Naidama and Sri Nagapachetiar on this occasion. We begin today's function with the invocation. May I request you all to please rise for the invocation. you all may i now request dr k j shriram director csir clra to welcome the gathering please please sir Good morning to one and all present here. It's been a memorable day for this institute. I would like to start off this day by recalling what I know about Dr. Naidama. I came into this institute as a fresher B.Tech student in 1990. We were brought in into this campus to tell us that this is the campus where we would spend the next two and a half years. We were introduced to the departments and every department that we went, every single person that whom we were introduced to started their introduction to the course with one word called Dr. Naidoma. At that point of time, we were not even sure whether the name Naidoma was a male or a female. But when we went to the main building, there was this bust of Dr. Naidoma. And from then onwards, my journey in this institute, through the days of BTEC, EMTEC, PhD, and whatnot, has always sounded with the name Dr. Naidoma. The Central Leather Research Institute was always known to people as the Naidama's Institute. And even today, that legacy continues. So when I took charge, the first thing that I was told was that it's in your period that Naidama would turn country. After that, I was told it's in your period 
that CLRA would turn 75. So we were prepared to have this program conducted in such a manner that the generations to come in this institute would continue to remember and work according to what Naidoma had desired us to do. In that process, my first welcome to all of you here is to the students of the Bachelors of Bachelor of Technology as well as other programs of leather technology of the Anna University. I hope you would all take efforts to understand what Dr. Naidoma stood for and how this institute and the leather industry in this country has started off with his ways and manners in which he wanted the industry to perform. The next part of welcome that I would like to give is to Sri Hashim and Sri Rafiq Hamad, both of whom I just had to tell them that, sir, it is on the 10th of September that Dr. Naidoma would turn 100 and would be happy if both of you are here. And that one word was more than sufficient enough to have both of them here. And I'm extremely thankful to them that they have been able, join, able to join us today in this entire event. The presence of Mr. Hashim and Mr. Rafiq Ahmed is symbolizes the research industry partnership that we have in this institute. Dr. Ramasamy needs no introduction to this organization. After Dr. Naida Ma, what we have all heard and learned and grown up has been the name Ramasamy. It symbolized a part of that program wherein a BTEC student can grow and occupy the highest chair of science and technology in this country. And he also, to me, symbolizes what Naidama wanted to do for this institute and he carried over and took it to a bigger platform of the country. I welcome you, sir, to preside over this program. The IDRC was the last of the organizations which Dr. Naidama was serving. And it was from ID, the return back from IDRC Canada that the fateful Kanishka happened. Uh, and that was what we know as the last trip of Dr. Naidama. So when I wrote to the IDRC requesting them to give the Naidama centenary lecture, they had no hesitation to say yes. And I may, told them, we would like to have you physically here in Chennai, and that's 10th of September. And we had got a confirmation from them within no time. And I'm extremely thankful to Dr. Anindya Chatterjee, Regional Director, IDRC, for his August presence today. While I welcome the industry, the industry partners in the Trinity, the family of Mr. Nagapan, it was that big photograph that we all see at the Department of Leather Technology, where Dr. G.S. Leda, Dr. Naidama, and Mr. Nagapan sitting through what we call as the trinity of partnership that we symbolize and we take forward. I welcome all of you in this uh, program. I'm thankful to all of my colleagues who have joined us today here in spite of being a second Saturday. And when we declared a working day today, I never expected to see all of you here today and your presence symbolizes what we are showcasing as our love and affection to Naidoma. Before I close, let me read out two statements that we have received today. One is from the former Honorable Vice President of India, Sri M. Venkaya Naidu. He sends us a message. My respectful tributes to the memory of the reputed scientist and leather technologist Sri Pelavarti Naidoma on his 100th Jayanti today. With his innovative approach, he not only popularized leather technology, but made it respectable and widely acceptable. Sri Naidoma epitomized the ideal of a scientist being a catalyst 
of social change. His stellar contribution to SNT will always be cherished. We also have another uh, note from Mr. Subaya Arunachala, who writes, I consider myself privileged that he thought of me when he needed some help privately while he was charged with the responsibility of reviving the reviewing the IITs in 1984. I had not worked with him before, nor had met him. Again, when he returned to CLRI after his term as DGCSAR, he asked me if I could shift to Chennai and join him to assist in his writing and policy work. I was also associated with an IDRC funded development project at Chennai based NGO when he was on the board of governors of IDRC. He, not for him, the chase after journal prestige, impact factors, citations and institutional linkages. He was truly a scientist of the people, a citizen scientist, if you may. This symbolizes Dr. Naidama to all of us. In this journey of the last one year, we have been partnered by the Vigyan Prasar, who have listed him as one of the scientists who are attaining 100 this year. And Vigyan Prasar had carried forward a program which, uh, uh, which was to recognize the events that had happened along with it. I welcome all of you once again for this program. And thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. We now give a traditional welcome to our dignitaries in the way of Angavastra. Sri M.M. Hashim Shah. Sri M. Rafiq Ahmed. Dr. T. Ramaswamy. Dr. Anindya Chatterjee and our own Dr. T. Ramaswamy. I request our director to present a shawl to Mrs. Shanti Arun, daughter of Nayadamma and Sri Arun, son-in-law of Nayadamma. I also request our director to present a shawl to Mrs. Egamai Chidambaram, daughter of Nagapachatiyar, and Vyangavastram to Mr. Chidambaram, son in law of Nagapachatiyar. Thank you, sir. I now request Sri Muhammad Hashim, chairman KH Group and the doyen of the Indian leather industry, to deliver his guest of honor address.
thank you very much sir for your remarkable words and recalling your interactions with dr naidamma i now request padma shri rafi kahmed president aishma and chairman farida group and yet another doyen of the indian leather industry to deliver this guest of honor address please sir. डॉक्टर रामस्वामी डॉक्टर चैटर्जी हाशिम डॉक्टर श्री राम सर फैमिली ऑफ डॉक्टर नाई रामा एंड डॉक्टर एम सनीला डॉक्टर ऑफ नागेश्वर चेटियार एंड सनीला ऑल माई फ्रेंड्स हियर डॉक्टर चंद्रशेखर एंड ऑल माई फ्रेंड्स हियर it is taking back my memory back to 60s middle of mid 60s so i always remember having visited with my father to central leather research institute that was my first time i came with this one that should be like something like in 1964 i don't know i stopped counting how many years it was uh at that time we came with my father we were taking on the ea tan leather which had some problems consistent problems in the tannery which was there and so we came here to talk to him on how to this to be solved or this is a problem which we are getting as you all know those days it was sold by weight everything was in the weight only so if you get if you lose weight in the tanning you will lose money in that uh, process and uh, something like problem was there so i came in i was watching my father talking to the ramains before right? and trying to solve this problem calling ganeshan so ganeshan and gadacharam uh, all those people around there and then discussing so what a kind of a attention what a kind of a care and thing he gave i was watching as a young, young guy i was watching how oh, this is being done a good scientist to his uh, to the name international known scientist to a ordinary tanner how he deals with it that was the first surprise first appreciation i got on dr nairam whom i met first time on that thing although he was born in a village in uh, i was told he was born in a village in the nairam who goes to the level of calling uh, they used to say in those days i don't know i was not knowing that he can walk into indira gandhi's room without even taking an appointment that was a kind of a respect he carried when that kind of a respect was there in delhi in the level of prime minister or that type of a thing the respect was not only for naidu naidamma but it was a respect for the leather industry all of it we were so proud as if that he is a man who is sitting there who can go there who has come from us who is among us and that made us proud always feel that whatever we feel that we have a people who can able to do that his humbleness his approach simplicity made them friends of the tanners as hashim has said those days were the days when we had our elders nagabachetia was there Peshwam Abdul Khayyum Sahib was there. Arikar Shukur, the legacy of Shukur Sahib. T. Abdul Wahid Sahib was there. My father was there. Was Abdul Wahid Sahib. Mr. C. K. Durevelan, he was there. These are the illustrious figures those days, and every one was a good friend of Mr. Naidu. That is the thing. The tradition to a scientist to a laboratory. that in these days okay we have got lot of problems lot of technology you come to see other you discuss with them or there in those days to associate them and to bring them to comfort of discussion was the character of dr dairama who made them comfort feel comfort to talk to him and he was available all the time in sir any time we ask for he is ready said come on come come and meet me right now or this afternoon that was the time which he was able to allocate to the tanners for their 
and in any of the big events i have seen him a big function happens so if i get uh, tires get together or that very rarely i see him in the stage he will be standing in among the crowd somewhere or wearing a funny cap i always used to you remember his cap you know he was wearing a funny cap like a uh, the uh, gorka type of a cap or something like that he was very somewhere he will be standing he was such being mixing with the people he was not very formal on that those things that as a small thing but it has to remember it. i remember those small things which makes it people great the small actions of them make them big big people and that that i saw in nidama the tanners get together was uh, was told was those the time when they established the tanners get together that was really a tanners get together not only the tanners from the south from the here tanners from uh, north north tanners from kolhapur miraj and those places when they had the back tanning and all those kolhapur chapel people they also used to come you will see the white cap people with these things they would be going around clr a time to the during the tanners get together they, he was able to bring them all together that is what the kind of a thing naidamas uh, achievements and bringing together the real meaning of get together tanners get together was there which was later changed to different name uh, see the technology at those days i remember what is the technology was required it was a fit tanning avaram barak tanning a fit tanning a 40 days tanning 45 days tanning changing into drum tanning into bottle extract bottle bark and bottle extract and everything was that itself was a big challenge that was a challenge of tanners to change over from fit tanning to the uh, drum tanning they required sin tans free tan sin tans and all those things so they never know about all those things there at the time my house clra came handy and tell them what is how you had to put it and how do you do do that one those things was the very important because the traditional industry of 100 years was try first time trying to change change to a faster tanning which is not possible because the pit tanning was no more there I mean, it has to be changed and has to be done and that was the help i know how uh, raidama help CLRA help the tanners to transform that one. After that, there are so many other things happened. You know that thing happened. Chitarabaya committee came in. They restricted the export of EA tan, then the finished leather, crushed leather. All those things came up naturally. But all the time, we had his help as long as he was here, and we remember him. And one more thing which I remember is during Nairama's time. i don't know what connection he had like what uh, the center what he was talking about in the, the development so and, and he was associated with untad or unido or so many other organizations so i see a lot of tanners from africa asia and other kind that is used to come and visit our tanneries he always he used to lead them and come with 10 people 12 people african tanners come to see what is happening in india what is the technology we are adopting all those things were happening very often not only one time but three times four times i can see here people visiting here it was, he was not only useful to us as indian he was useful to all of the africans and developing countries also his contribution towards those days i i my great respect to him i remember him i adore his things i always cherish my my association and my industries association with him and we my by my behalf and on behalf of the leather industry on behalf of the all india skins and association which is 117 years old association i thank him i remember him i really respect him and give my full respect to him i pray his uh, soul rest in peace that what and after that after that dama we have seen a one small uh, died on that was dr ramasan the one who was closer to the industry part of the industry that was one generation the next generation who came in has fully associated with uh, ramasabi and uh, how close he was not only for any thing not only the thing personal things also 
he used to keep in touch with everyone everything he liked in ram sir is a known clr is less known than ram sir is known more that is happened that i feel that that is a teaching of pride amma who made ram sir to be closer to industry and for that matter all the directors who came in also later on except one or two directors all of them kept closer and closer connection with me that is why the industry and technology clri what it is today the industry's contribution and relationship with clri is the legacy of naidama followed by dr sadi and all of the directors i thank you for inviting me dr sri ram for this meeting and i had the greatest pleasure when i told sri ram told me i said sir oh, i am coming which day tell me the time and date i will come the first thing i said i will take it to that that's the file that what i kept in my heart and my mind i want to reveal my tributes to dr naidama that was the chance he gave me i should thank him for that thank you thank you so much sir for sharing your association with dr naidama now the presidential address is being delivered by dr t ramsamy former secretary ministry of science and technology government of india who was a student of dr naidama i take the pleasure of inviting dr t ramsamy to deliver the presidential address please please sir very good morning to all of you vanakkam uh, indian leather industry is very privileged it has the blessings of people like the naidama the contributions of both uh, mr chetiar and mr wahid in one generation then we have the presence of the people like mr hashim and mr rafiq ahmed and uh, i used to call mr hashim talaiver konja vayasa anadukku na perum talaiver aitaru and the perum talaiver terminology is used for mr kamra in the state and leather industry has the blessing of people like samraj who is cool and cool. and you know rajendra prasad used to be called rajan babu and we have babu here this is rabi hamad so we have two stalwarts who have uh, played a very important role in transforming the leather industry uh, it's true that nadama and his generation lay the foundation in foundational steps you put a lot of effort but you don't see the building coming and i think uh, for the building to come up you have a sustained action and i think what has happened is mr rafi ahmed and mr harshim provide the structure to what was given so on behalf of this uh, madam mas centenary celebration family i don't call it the system let me Uh, add my own words of welcome to those Mr. Hashim and Mr. Rafi Kamala. Uh, Dr. Naidama was a global citizen, born in a small village, Elavardi. That was the setting in which he was born. But mentally, he was a global citizen, and therefore, he connected himself to all the agencies in the world. would had development as a focus i am very grateful to dr india chatterjee for representing this idrc uh, not just the organization but the cause of development itself in this program and that's what that will probably uh, do good to the reputation and the legacy of the plant itself now of course that the seram has this uh, let me say the order's job of continuing the legacy of uh, dr naidama and the people of the system so i have four people on the dais i think i just by coincidence i happen to be here in this function i'm very grateful that i have an opportunity to be part of this process i have in some sense become part of the family of uh, dr naidama uh, my teacher can parent a student also so i have now Yeah, uh, a blood brotherly relationship with Shanti, and of course, uh, Dr. Arun, Mr. Arun, and I worked for Mr. Chetia in Chrome Leather Company. Of course, uh, the family of Chetia. 
and uh, all members of the CLRA family and both past and present and maybe even future because there are many young students here. I am going to share with you as a different emotions on this occasion. Oftentimes my friends in the Western world used to say, Oh, leather is a family oriented profession. It's all family family. I said, what is wrong with the family oriented profession? I used to ask this question. Now I realize on this occasion that the family orientation is not just in the professional allowed. The way the leather industry has leather sector has grown was that family itself, because Dr. Nadama was a part of that family. It is that family to which uh, the Shanti is come through biological process, we have come through professional process. Now, look at that family orientation. Uh, Mr. Hashim talked about uh, Dr. Nadama introducing him in Delhi, that uh, this guy is a future leader. Yeah, at that time, Mr. Hashim must have been a much younger man. Anyway, you have to see, uh, those of you very young people, you have not seen Mr. Hashim in his younger days. He was a quite a very aggressive, active man. That man, when his prime part was recognized by Dr. Nadama as a future leader of this place. And that's what the leadership is all about. Okay. And you heard Mr. Rafiq Ahmed telling you that he came with his father and met uh, Dr. Nadama and felt homely. And that is what I talked about the family orientation that this sector has. It turns out, I was a student of Dr. Nedema, especially for those of you who are students in the National Department of CLI today. I'd like to tell you, I met him when I was 16 years old. Therefore, in some sense, I have a sort of a moral authority to claim that Dr. Nedema made me what I am. Therefore, Dr. Nadama, at the age of, when my age of 19, he said, Hey, Dr. Ramasamy, you have the potential, you're, you'll be the which director of this institute one day. But you have everything positive. But you have a problem. Your social skills are zero. And if you don't improve your people skills and social skills, the contributions you will make to the, the, all the strength will become not, and the contributions you will make to the country will become nil. He spotted me when I was 19 years old and said one day I'll be the director of CLA. So there are two of us belong to similar generation. Mr. Ba uh, Hashim being introduced in the government as uh, the future uh, head of this industry. And uh, one of his students in BTEC being told you'll be the future director of CLA. That is what leadership is all about. And that's what your family head does all the time. So Dr. Naidamma remains in the heart of many of us as a, a beacon of light. Fundamentally, I would say 100 years ago today, this day, a star was born in the horizon of the Indian leather sector. Okay? What does a star do? Star actually provides light. It provides a beacon of light. And when does a star shine? When there's a darkness. Okay, we don't see the star during the daytime. The sunlight is around, you don't sense the star in the horizon. And it turned out, the leather industry 100 years ago in this country had been honestly suffering darkness of all sorts, darkness of knowledge in the way. The star was born, he was, in fact, he finished his uh, industrial chemistry in Banaras Indian University. And he had a way of talking. Gift of the Gab was fantastic. So his father wanted him to become a lawyer. I think the law profession lasts a good human being. I, mean, I think they must have, God must have found he was too good to be a lawyer. So they sent him to leather. And he he met somebody, they converted him into a leather scientist. He went to, he was sent to England for higher education by this government of India to acquire degree to become to be a leather scientist. He found the type of education being given the National Leather Sellers College in England would not suffice the requirement of CLR. So he took his own decision, went to Lehigh, and got his PhD in leather science at the time. For those of you who might not know, he became the director of the institute when he was 34 years old. 
okay and he was uh, he was fully charged and finally he had to be confirmed to be director he had an interview and can you guess at midnight at 12 o'clock in the night who took the interview did he then the prime minister india and uh, he began the full fledged at the age of 36 and he uh, brought together a transformational change in the way people thought it is not actions the way people thought and it was a truly a uh, uh, a transformational change brought out by a scientist has to be recognized like it differently from the way other scientists do most scientists including myself in my younger days were uh, engaged in work which got the endorsement of other scientists peer recognition to get a badna prize in this recognition that recognition and so on so the science based celebrity scientists has been the focus of most scientists in the world itself in his generation and maybe that has become even more pronounced in this generation but there are very few scientists who want to do things with celebrity based citizens and people of the world and dr nayamma at that time itself recognize that knowledge uh, has to become a uh, a input in the process a star brings out not only light it also elicits attractive force any star brings an attractive force that nadam attracted everybody whether they are from leather industry or the scientists uh, uh, not just leather across the country in any branch of science international groups he had he was a sort of member of the fao part of the unido and was part of the idrc and so on and all of them in fact i do not know i'll make it sort of uh, known in some sense there was a time before he actually quit the office of director general of csir the world bank wanted him as an advisor and there was a special emissary sent to this country to release dr nayama to go and work for the world bank especially looking at the as a development of developing countries therefore he was a scientist who had a social consciousness built in very strongly in the way things were done leather industry at that time okay was seen as a lowly profession by the society itself and he brought technology to change that esteem in the process today leather industry is so different that uh, i let to uh, shanti ask me i to share this with you the the kind of students who join btech leather technology today in ac tech you know for course there is some 98% cut off or something so they are very bright people who have opportunities elsewhere they come here and that is a attractive force that the star of ragnarama uh, brought here and frankly star removes the darkness the star in his glance removes the darkness when the darkness and i believe there in leather industry in his time not just in this country all over the world i would say had suffered from certain levels of darkness arising out of lack of knowledge and the knowledge was his premium so dr nayamma's uh, uh, so as we celebrate the centenary of uh, dr nayamma we don't celebrate the human being we don't celebrate the individual we celebrate the message that he left for we celebrate his actions and what he stood for as philosophical end and i would say that uh, nadama it remains in the hearts of very people who know him that's a different matter he left this institution as a dgcsar 51 years ago 1971 he left this planet at 37 years ago so majority of the people here were neither born by the time of his uh, going away certainly would not have entered service as real are right? the 37 years is a very long time so majority of you have heard the name nadam you have not experienced it it turns out mr hashim experienced it i experienced it mr babu has experienced him in a somewhat like contracted sense because he's much younger the reason was only that process but i would still say 
still say is a is influenced by the star madama even today although he seen him reported the other of you who have not seen him will not have not uh, met him but his force the attractive force still remains active not just in the presence of the clri not just in the the portals of csir not in the bound geographical boundaries of this country india his force remains active across the world where development based on knowledge is a thing therefore what i would say nidamma to me symbolizes one single word knowledge for inclusive development his knowledge for inclusive development knowledge in many places technology in several parts of the world has led to social asymmetries before technology revolution there was no developing country developed country classification in 1750 india's uh, uh, economic component was 28% of the global economic product at that time nobody called india a developed country but after technology revolution happened india missed the technology revolution then countries became to be classified as a developing country a developed country and the classifications happened technology caused social asymmetries knowledge has caused but he was giving also the bridging part of technology where the technology can bridge asymmetries as well and the best way to bridge asymmetry social asymmetry in the indian social context in the time in which he was uh, instrumental because soon after independence the best possible area in 1947 for using technology to address social asymmetries was leather and even today leather remains because it creates jobs employment therefore leather industry is the the most opportune sector for anybody who is focused on knowledge of inclusive development and like dr nidam up took that position in some sense gandhi said this already in 1934 that uh, india was exporting 9 crores worth of raw hides and skins what is the required the technical training and technology to convert them into products that set in 94 1948 an institute was uh, set up it was to create that uh, development process and what is it create opportunities it turned out when i was uh, at the right age to join college i forewent other all other options engineering options and chose to do leather technology for the same reason that it gives an opportunity for knowledge for inclusive development so my request to younger people today who are in this group don't look at nidama just as a human being we are celebrating the 100th year of a man who lived and like a star but he is a shining star he is conveying the message that knowledge has to be for inclusive development of people not just yourself and there's a much larger role to play you can do much more social good global good by relating knowledge and that's the message that i wish to have it delivered on the centenary of that nidamma you know, because that's the only only way in which you can pay homage to a leader is to do better what he himself had done in the past to do better than what he had done in the past i am very very grateful to my friends from the industry i'm very uh proud of the clra family and i like to give a message to the younger people who are studying leather technology and participating in the centenary please carry on the torch carry on the task of uh, conveying this knowledge for inclusive development for all kinds of people thank you very much thank you sir on this memorable occasion CSIA CLRI is bringing out a coffee table book on the life and achievements of Professor Dr. Nayadamma which also has reminiscences from his students and associates may I request Dr. T Ramaswamy to release Dr. Nayadamma photo story book and I request Sri MM Hashim Shah to receive the first copy
Thank you, sir. Mrs. Shanti Arun, daughter of Dr. Nayanamma, and Dr. Raghav Rao and Dr. Ramesh have contributed to the development of two classrooms at KVCLRA school. We had the Bhumi Puja this morning, and may I now request Sri M. Rafi Kehman to unveil electronically the foundation stone for KVCLRA school classrooms. At this point of time, I would also like to inform all of you that uh, the flagship program of the CSIR, Jigyasa, which we used to do for the school children of the KB schools, we had traveled all the way to the ZP school where Dr. Naidoma had studied in Tenali. For this one day event where we took the science from CLRI to the school there, 128 students benefited through institutional lectures by Dr. J. Raghav Rao and other colleagues who held practical demonstrations for them. The event was held on the 3rd of September this month and the students gave a very positive feedback and we hope to continue this program in association with the school authorities. Thank you, sir. To commemorate this occasion, CSAR CLRI would like to unveil the foundation stone for Dr. Nayadama Centenary Hall. I take the pleasure of inviting Sri M. M. Hasim Saab to unveil the foundation stone for Dr. Nayadama Centenary Hall. Friends, uh, this hall is the, the purpose of this hall would be to showcase the entire life of Dr. Nayadama through pictures. It would be a visitor's launch and we propose that as we finish the construction of this hall through a corporate social responsibility and other donations, it would be a completely uh, industry funded activity. And the idea of this would be to give to anyone who comes to CLRA in the future a glimpse of what Dr. Naido must took for. So this would be coming up in almost another six months to one year time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. As part of Dr. Naiduma Birth Centenary Commemoration, an essay writing competition was organized by CSIR CLRI and Association of Leather Technologists for the students of ACTIC College on the contributions of Professor Elavarti Naiduma. May I now request Dr. T. Ramaswamy to present the awards to the winners of Dr. Naiduma Essay Writing Competition. The award carries a cash prize and a certificate. May I now announce the winners? The winners are Mr. E. Balaji Praveen, first place. Ms. M. Abhishri and Mr. S. Ambarish Krishna both of them have secured the second place.
Thank you very much, sir. We will now have a short break for the rearrangement of the dais. Kindly remain seated. We will now have the Naidama Birth Centenary Lecture. Dr. Anindya Chatterjee is the Regional Director Asia at the International Development Research Center, IDRC, New Delhi, India. He has provided leadership in research, research management, policy and program development in the area of global health and development. Dr. Chatterjee formerly worked internationally with the United Nations Development Agencies and research agencies, government authorities, and non-governmental organizations as well. He has been closely involved with national programs in several countries in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. A graduate of the Kolkata Medical College and Hospital, he also holds a doctorate in psychiatry from the University College of Medicine in India and postdoctoral training in anthropology and public health at both the University of Calcutta and UCLA Fielding School of Public Health, Los Angeles, California. Dr. Chatterjee is the author of several articles, monographs, and books on topics such as HIV AIDS prevention in Asia. I take the pleasure of inviting Dr. Anindya Chatterjee to deliver the Noidama Birth Centenary Lecture. Please, sir. Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Sriram, uh, Sri Hashim, Sri Rafiq Ahmed, Dr. Ramushwami, uh, family members of uh, Professor Nayadamba, colleagues, staff of the institute, students, scholars, ladies and gentlemen. It, it, it is a great honor for me to speak here today on behalf of the International Development Research Center and our president, uh, John LeBell. Uh, at today's program of Professor uh, Narendra Bath Centenary celebration at his own institute. As you may know that um, International Development Research Center or IDRC, it is as it is often referred to, is an international development uh, research organization based out of Canada. And we have our uh, Asia regional office in Delhi, which I, where I'm based. We have a long-standing collaboration with universities, foundations, um, research institutions in India and in Tamil Nadu over the years. Um, now, let me start um, my talk with a personal anecdote. I joined IDRC about uh, exactly a decade back. As you heard, my professional background is in global health and I had worked nationally with the Council of Medical Research here and internationally with the UN and other international agencies uh, before I joined IDRC. Now, in one of my first visits um, to our headquarters in Ottawa, in Canada, I found myself in one of the meeting rooms on the seventh floor called Board Room. And this is a room where IDRC Board of Governors meet three times in a year. And I saw a black and white photograph of Professor Naidama on the wall and, and, and a quote from the Vice President of India on his tragic death. 
and how India lost one of its best minds uh, prematurely. He was the governor of IDRC from 1981 to 1985, and it was on a trip from Canada that the ill-fated Kanishka flight disaster occurred. So this black and white photograph of the gentleman from hot and steamy Chennai was watching over his colleagues, other members, or the board members from all over the world in the cold and snowy Ottawa. I was hooked and I started reading his works more seriously. And our library has quite some material uh, about his works and his tenure um, as, a, as a governor of IDRC. Now, those of you who know us, we are an in unique institution which was established by the Act of Canadian Parliament. We have recently celebrated our 50th anniversary as an organization. And uh, IDRC from the very outset developed and cultivated an exemplary international network of researchers and practitioners on international development. In the early years, Dr. M. G. K. Menon, Dr. V. Ramalunga Swami were members of IDRC board. Professor Nayudama was another Indian luminary in the board of IDRC. As a governor, he not only had influence on how Canadian overseas development assistance was um, used for development research, but he also directly shaped the development research agenda through his contribution on the work program uh, of the organization. He was a relentless advocate for technologies for humanity and to bring modern science to bear upon the problems and needs of the rural poor. These were the foundation principles upon which IDRC itself was established. And he was at the right place at the right time, one could also argue ahead of the time. Let me start with my main points of, uh, with the main points of my talk today. First, on the investments in institutions and trajectory of development in science, technology, and research in post-independent India. And I'm, I'm, I'm making a brief comment to situate um, his legacy, uh, both national and international. India's path to scientific progress was rather unique in the region compared to other countries in the region. Very early in the course, uh, after independence, atomic energy, UGC, defense research, agriculture, medical, railway research, infrastructure were established in India. In the following decades, big investment in several research, educational, technical, engineering, and management institutions were made. Science policy resolution dates as early as 1958. Several towering personalities provided leadership during this period. Bhatnagar, Saravai, Bhava, Kothari, and so on and so forth, to name a few. Professor Nayudamma, in the lineage of these luminaries, was acutely aware of India's trajectory and aspirations. And he shaped it when we wrote about the need for scientific temper, scientific outlook, outlook, and scientific approach to problems. He was a visionary. When he started to provide thought and institutional leadership of this institution, and later uh, uh, in Delhi at CSIR and so forth, he delved right into the problem of management of research. He was outspoken in fostering industry and research institute collaboration. This institute carries that legacy. And we have heard uh, those stories, some of those stories today. His insights were striking, his observations insightful, and his remarks germane. He spoke about the culture of management of research and and about, research, about leaders who manage them, both in the university system and outside it. 
He said, and I quote from his 1973 lecture, that often directors have little experience of collaborative or team research. They're zealous of departmental boundaries, distrustful of equals and imperious towards subordinates. So unique style of writing, direct, uh, uh, giving you the diagnosis. I'm from the medical field, so I look at it that way, giving you straight away the diagnosis. And, and many of us who have dealt with collaborative research spend significant parts of our time in, in collaborate, fostering collaborative research. This resonates with us um, very, very, very strongly. And he says, this problem of um, uh, fragmentation leads to problem of application of research. He was visionary in his view of uh, um, research management. He delved into the philosophy of decentralized management of research in a country like India, often with a network of institutions in states and a central authority or structure like the councils of research where I have worked. He spoke about trust, courage to trust, readiness to make decisions by discussion and not by sanction of an authority. He felt and openly advocated that delegation is not fragmentation. It is the creation, and I'm quoting him, it is the creation of a coherent and coordinated network of teams, each with a clear de delineation of its authority, responsibility, and accountability, outstanding uh, thought leadership. He was very aware of the trajectory and aspirations of India's science and technology community and spoke about setting and prioritizing the research agenda according to the needs of the country. Now let me move to um, his international um, work. But before I do that, I, I read from a note that he has written about CLRI and those of you who live in the campus, uh, who study here, who teach here, uh, spend time in research here and have spent time here in the past, they will uh, probably uh, connect with this note. He's, he writes, the director get, goes around the institute every morning from 10 to 1 p.m. This is possible because he is responsible only for one area and therefore has enough time to look after the administration, his own research, and to have an idea as to what everyone is doing. He's also helped by the fact that project leaders and area leaders do not come to the director for day-to-day -day decisions. The qualities of leadership are now found at all levels of the institute, and any area leader today could be the director of the institute. There are days uh, in the central Leather Research Institute, when the director is out of the country, the deputy director is also out, and the third line management has has to take up the director's duties, and yet is run just, well, just as well. The director has been an advisor to the Organization of African States and to the various bodies of the United Nations, and he has been out of the country for two to three months a year. No matter who has acted in his place, the Institute has functioned according to the pattern set and the policies laid down at the beginning of the year. So um, his uh, ability uh, as a manager, but also this gives this note gives us uh, the sense of how much time he was spending representing India, contributing, advising governments outside India, uh, representing and influencing UN's agenda in multilateral platform, sitting in the board of organizations like IDRC. So a fourth of his time, up to a fourth of his time was directly involved in doing international work. You know, that's why I pointed out, read that note out. His vision of science and technology development in the global south, the developing world, he designated in an article as weaving in modern technology in traditional tapestry. That's how he saw it. He warned that modernization should avoid homogenizing cultures 
for increasing inequalities and exploitation. The essential parameters of such development for him were aiming for self-reliance, consider social values and cultural aspects of technology, environmental concerns, and reduction of economic disparities. He wrote, the new quest for new science arises from new awareness that man's inner needs and social values are as great as his outer requirements and acceptance of the fact that world is evolving towards a plurality of civilizations to meet different social values and the present method of science and technology is inadequate to meet these new goals. And that new science should replace its all linear thinking with multidimensional systems approach and is multicultural and meets the aspirations of different groups of people. He made a whole series of practical recommendations in many, many international platforms, advised the Economic Commission of Africa in 1984 to invest in the design and application capabilities of African countries to prevent becoming dependent on industrialized countries. Today, in many ways, practice of research is a complex, diverse, and global enterprise. Many projects are multi-country with networks of researchers being involved. We support such collaborations from climate change adaptation science to understanding interface between animal health or human health or studying antimicrobial resistance and so forth. The many successful research collaborations among countries and institutions of the Global South, as well as there is more traditional collaboration between institutions of industrialized North and the South. In the latter case, there are still power imbalances between institutions. But I must underline that there is more competence today in many institutions, including in India, or particularly in India, who are managing international research collaboration um, and, and, and doing that quite successfully. Secondly, on setting uh, the international research and development agenda, which was, as a thought leader, this was his major contribution. And, and he was acutely aware of India's context, the context of the global south, the context of developing countries. And, and, and he was relentless in advocating what is important to, 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 to this large portion of the world. He wrote that there are national and regional issues of importance and, and outlined disasters, family planning, nutrition, water and sanitation, new energy systems such as solar, wind, biogas, and production of energy in small quantities in large number of dispersed locations. I mean, we're dealing with all of them now, you know, probably at much, much larger scale uh, from his time. But they're as relevant as it was uh, during his time when he wrote this. Today, we have the global mechanisms such as SDGs uh, to set up, pursue, set up and pursue national, regional and, and international uh, development agenda. He was aware of the differences between developed and developing nations and warned that evaluations on arbitrary criteria and tendencies to impose new value systems can be erroneous and damaging. He deliberated about the need to generate the spirit of cooperation and involvement of all sections of people, various groups and agencies effectively to take advantage of the skills available to the institutions and avoid duplications. These, these ideas today are central to international collaborations. This is mainstream today. And, they, and this, this has not been an easy journey. This has been a long and arduous journey uh, to arrive at this point where we are today. Where he wrote, whereas the nations may directly interact bilaterally, Certain of the requirements can be best met through formal international arrangements. As I said, he represented, and as you said today, uh, he represented India in many multilateral fora over the years. The Economic 
commission, social commissions of Africa, Asia, UNIDO, UNTA, UNESCO, IDRC, and so forth. Uh, he advised that we, we need to study and analyze different concepts, methodologies, and technologies for rural development. Rural development, rural development was very close to his eye. Now, I want to uh, touch upon another point um, before closing uh, this talk. Um, and this is on the recent global phenomena of misinformation about science and scientific findings made possible due to the power of the social media and internet, which we see today. One example is the anti-vaccine movement. So if there are people actively campaigning, making bizarre and false claims that coronavirus vaccine are used to implant microchips into people or that vaccines would kill millions. Groups opposing vaccines are small, but their online communication strategy is far reaching. Decades before this millennials era of social media and internet, reflecting on a similar social phenomena, superstition, he wrote, he once wisely reflected and wrote that some believe that advances in science will conquer superstition. But others see this as a way of life, a shortcoming of the human mental process. Scientific advances will bring new superstitions. And it is for educators to win people away from harmful beliefs and superstitions. So it's, you know, crystal clear insight into, uh, into, into social phenomena and, and how to address them um, and so on. What an impressive range of contributions from the world of ideas to advising governments, representing India in multilateral and international forum and platforms, and contribute to setting the global development and research agendas. What a legacy to celebrate here today. So let me uh, conclude with a fine, final um, uh, comment now. Capacity and contribution of Indian institutions in international collaborative research today has roots in such broad systems thinking of the likes of Nadi Naidam. Looking inwards with frog in the well mentality or closing the windows and doors to the world have never been an option. On the 75th, 75th year of independence, I feel the time is right where the Indian scientific community should lead from the front in more and more international collaborative research and the system should enable institutions and individuals to make, make this happen. This is the best way to respect, recognize the pioneering contribution of Narayana. And for me personally, to come to this, to come to his institute today and pay tribute to his memory and legacy on behalf of IDRC is very special. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir, for that enthralling lecture. May I now request the director, Dr. K. J. Sriram, to present a citation to Dr. Anindya Chatterjee. I also request our director to present the mementos to the dignitaries, Sri Imam Hashim Saab. Sri M. Rafiq Ahmed Saab. Anindya Chatterjee, and our own Dr. T. Ramaswamy.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. May I now call upon Dr. N. Nishad Fatima, coordinator of the event, for proposing the formal oath of thanks. It gives me immense pleasure to propose the word of thanks. I thank one and all present here for your gracious presence. My heartfelt thanks to the doyens of the leather industry, Sri M.M. Hashim Saab and Sri Rafiq Ahmed, for truly honoring us today with your presence. So though the title reads as guest of honors, we have always considered you as part of our CSCR family. Thank you for your presence. My special thanks to our mentor, Dr. T. Ramasamy, for being the guiding light, as always, and for presiding over this function. And thank you, sir, for the compliments you paid for the photo story book. Thank you very much. My sincere thanks to Dr. Anandya Chatterjee for delivering the Naidoma Birth Centenary Lecture in a manner befitting. Thank you so much, sir. And I thank the family members of Dr. Naidama for their presence and also for their kind contribution for construction of the classroom at KVCLRA. My special thanks to Dr. J. Raghavarav and his family for their generous contribution for the construction of classrooms at KVCLRA. I thank Mr. Nagapa Chittia's family members for honoring us today with their kind presence. And I thank the former directors my uh, members of the industry, members of Alpha, ILTA, the CSCR family, and all other stakeholders for your unstinted support to the Institute in all our endeavors. I thank the media personnel present here. I thank the members of the organizing committee and the support team for making this function a grand success. And I thank our director for his immense support in organizing this entire event. I thank you all once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. May I now request you all to please rise for the national anthem. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. I request all of you, please join us in the front of the Triple Helix Auditorium. I am requesting uh, Sri Hashim and uh, Sri Rafiq Ahmed to please, uh, along with Mr. Andy Chakrishi, to plant uh, trees in front of the Triple Helix so as to symbolize the 100 years of Naidoma. And this would subsequently be followed by uh, tree plantation by Mrs. Shanti in the uh, corridor, the next to the back side of the main building. So I request all the staff members to first Move to the front of the Triple Helix Auditorium, please.